So uh, within the WBCSD, we are uh, very glad and very happy to participate to uh, this session. And uh, I think uh, it's a key topic for business, but also for many stakeholders to understand what are the issues uh, around uh, resilience in linked to climate, linked to water, linked to uh, other change, as Fred has said. Fred already mentioned and have the name resilience. And let's start by looking at these two quotes. One from Charles Darwin. It is not the strongest species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It is the one that is the most adaptable to change. And another one from Bernard Williams, philosopher. Man never made any material as resilient as human spirit. These two quotes contradict themselves. But this contradiction represents exactly what is the challenges about resilience, from just taking change as it comes and following with an, a reactive type of mode, which would be a little bit what Charles Darwin quote would say, while Bernard Williams quote is much more about the creativity and that human spirit can lead to and uh, make resilience typ a typical human type of behavior. And all along this uh, seminar, I'm sure you will recognize in every discussion this type of two uh, type of possible behavior. The title of the session is indeed provocative. Seeking profits, and especially in a multi-stakeholder uh, environment like this conference, it's voluntary provocative. Why? I think the situation needs some provocation. Provocation because we need new awareness. There is a great level of awareness. The water community, which is gathered here, has had this awareness for the last 30 and more years. But what is happening today needs a change in, in the way uh, both science and uh, other information around the issue are there. We need new ideas, ideas on business model, ideas on technology, ideas on social dimension of the issues that the change, upcoming change are needed. And we need to move these ideas into solutions. You know, it's nice to have ideas. A number of us have spent part of their life in research labs or are still in research labs where there is a lot of ideas, efforts going on. And everybody knows to move an idea or a research results into a true economic viable, socially viable, environmentally viable solution is another set of challenges often much more complex than just the creation of new ideas. This picture, we all know them. There is many, many of them during this uh, uh, week here. I choose to put it on the screen just to recall that the issue around water is not a new one. For many human communities, traditionally over centuries, millennium, the water scarcity has been part of the day-to-day -day life. And this has not been easy for many. The issue is that it is more and more like that for many new ones. Another image, just to frame the debate. We also have seen this kind of image very often. What does it say? It says that both climate change and the human pressure on resources are two problems which add one to another. And there is no way to look at climate change as being responsible or human intensive action on the environment as the main cause. It is both and more and more because of the growing population. Let's recall the world population has been multiplied by seven over the last century. 
the world population was roughly 1 billion in 1900. We turned last year 7 billion, you know, seven times more demand, and added to the need of an increased standards of living for many of these 7 billion today. So the pressure is even much more than seven times because we want to have this population having a better life. Again, image seen many, many times. I chose this one just to show two individuals and to recall that we should never, even in our big picture, holistic approaches, think and for, sorry, forget that at the bottom of the pyramid, there is millions of individuals with their individual problems. Same event, Katrina, different picture. The massive and collective dimension of the change occurring due to climate change. There is debate, is Katrina part of uh, due to climate change and man-made climate change or not? But anyway, we observe these kind of changes are now part of our life. So these two dimensions, the individual ones, look, going to consider what, it, what anything means for local community and individuals. And in the meantime, what is the global dimension of the issue? Are the two extreme points in which we need to move permanently? At the WBCSD, we have had, and this is a, uh, a survey which was done some years ago, what are the risks for business coming from climate change impact? Classical answers, raw material supply disruption, supply chain disruption, liability risk, regulatory exposure, extreme uh, weather events, slow change in the climate, reputational risk, nothing new around it. What is interesting is that the thinking is changing as the climate is changing. And we need to have in mind that what we have seen today is probably nothing in comparison of what are the changes ahead of us. And one of these change in the business mind is to move from risk to opportunity. And here, the same survey has shown that business is seeing also the change as an opportunity. And we all know that there is nothing more efficient for stimulating the entrepreneurial spirit than a change in the environment, because a change needs new solutions, and that's where business is good at, providing new solutions. And here on this graph, you have also uh, the opportunity as seen uh, by the WBCSD member, better access to raw material in some cases, more favorable regulatory framework, but overall, the dominant new product and services. The change is really about new product and services, new businesses, and new markets, being the other face of uh, new uh, product and services. And when you add both, you realize that uh, it's covering really the opportunity as seen for business is in product, services, and markets. Going quickly through it, agriculture, raw materials, water, healthcare, all this constitute number of opportunity that climate change and uh, water scarcity or change in water regime more globally could lead to. And uh, I'm not going to enter in many examples. This is familiar, but really what is a dominant mindset today is let's look at this as uh, an opportunity. Another set of options, services, distribution, logistics, manufacturing, number of area where business face it to change will be able to propose new solution and to create new approach which will be creating value. And even if all this costs money, people should recall that once you spend money as an investment to overcome a change, 
this money is, if well placed, is entering in the economic cycle and is creating benefit and as a multiplying factor, which is hopefully benefit. So even if you say adaptation as a cost, it may not be a disaster. It may be the opposite. It could be the opportunity to have new economic cycles built on that. I have stolen this slide to Greenpeace. We are in a provocative mode. We have said that. <laughs> Cleaner is cheaper. Behind this, business would say, we need to internalize externalities, different words to say the same thing. And really, what is at stake is to make cleaner cheaper. It's not a given. Greenpeace tend to say it's a given and there is nothing to do or it's automatic. We all know it's very complex. But obviously, internalizing externalities is something which is at stake for water, for climate. Totally different, the water cycle from the CO2 price globally. But nevertheless, it's the same logic in which business is strongly engaged today. This picture, what does it mean? It is about technology. It's about investment. And what we have a chance here is that roughly the investment cycles in the area of energy, climate, correspond to 20 to 40 years lifetime of uh, assets and equipment. While we know that it is also the time scale in which significantly the change regarding climate and water regime are going to appear. So, and sometimes if you want to change very often, very quickly an investment and you have a long return, you have a disconnect which is very difficult to, to manage. Here, we could see as a chance, some, this doesn't mean there is no urgency, there is an uh, urgency to start, but that we can al already see this adequation of the change and of the business cycles in this area are being a positive. Last point. Dialogues with stakeholders. This week is about it. Many other forums and platforms are about it. But clearly, climate science, technology around water, energy, business, civil society, consumers, NGOs, and governments are the key players. And there is really a need to strengthen all this dialogue around it. Sustainable development is about dialogue to ensure successful climate resilience in the water, in the climate, in the energy aspects. So to conclude these introductory remarks and to put the key element uh, of uh, this afternoon, change is there. And change will be even more there in the coming years and is regarded as an opportunity by entrepreneurs. Not all business is entrepreneur. There is winner and losers. We all know that. And it's part of business life. But for the entrepreneurial spirit, it is really an opportunity. Second, we have this win-win move of pricing externality, which leads to investment in water or climate-friendly solution will be profitable, and damage to the environment will be costly, the two faces of the coin of pricing externalities. What I just mentioned about investment time frame, the fact that there is roughly a match allows to see a progress possible without too major disruption if well sought in advance with innovative solutions. A no-brainer, linking resilience investment with mitigation. It is clear that nobody is going to say, okay, we are uh, ready for, mitigation, for uh, resilience. We don't care anymore of uh, mitigation. It's totally linked, and uh, nobody is, always, is, already, is today thinking of doing one without the other. And a must, a real collaborative anticipated forward-looking spirit by all stakeholders. And to end, as I started by an image, we, in the view of business, we have a smiley future. Thank you very much. Thank you.